Are you looking for a short straight bob, the perfect length, kind of classically designed yet exquisitely tailored? I have just the style for you coming up. I purchased this style with my own funds from Wig Studio One. I'll go ahead and drop in the product links below this video in the description section. These are not affiliate links. I do not earn any commission from Wig Studio One, but we do invite you to go out and take a look at all of the colors and pricing. I am an employee of Wig Studio One. I manage the YouTube channel by Wig Studio One. If you haven't been out to that channel, be sure to do so. There's just nothing else like it on YouTube for the amount of wig reviews, the, I think we have over 10 ladies making contributions to that channel, as well as the best variety of styles and colors on YouTube. What I'm wearing is Chic Shot by Gabor in the color Soft Shades Sunkissed Beige, which is GL23 101SS. Uh, Chic Shot is a beautiful, just very exquisitely tailored, short straight bob style. It's classically designed, as I mentioned, um, but it has some beautiful, beautiful modern layering. Soft Shades Sun Kiss Beige starts with a beautiful, icy, platinum blonde. And then you'll also see some highlights in there of more of a neutral beige color. Now there's not enough beige to warm this up. Beige is more neutral in tone and it's definitely not real visible when you look at this color from afar. You really have to get up on it to see any of the beige appearance. It's a very fine highlight that's well blended. It does offer a little bit of dimension, but I think where you're going to get most of your dimension is in the rooting. So this is a soft shades root. Gabor does a soft shades root. It's not traditional rooting. Um, it is designed to be a little softer and gr more gradual transition into the main body of the color. Um, now, this particular root um, is, starts out as a kind of a light to medium gold blonde, um, and then it transitions into that platinum. Now, the rooting itself does offer dimension, uh, but it is very brassy in tone. You'll notice that on a lot of the blondes in the soft shade tones. So now it's time to go ahead and do our unboxing of the style. I'll go ahead and put up some footage here. Turn it inside out and take a look at this cap right away. This is a very luxurious cap with some hand tied features. The first thing you'll see is a temple to temple lace front. Now that lace front does not extend back into the ear tab. And then there's what they call a hand tied top. It kind of mimics a monofilament top, but really what it is, it's a soft pliable mesh base material uh, with a hand tied knotting and then that's covered up with a soft pliable tool like material. So it's a two ply effect and it gives a really nice appearance from the top. It's soft and comfortable. You've got the closed velvet lined ear tabs, a standard nape, Velcro style adjusters and lots of wefting. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all my normal maneuvers. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it and show you what it looks like. So I will say that I did have to cinch these adjusters in to accommodate a petite average circumference. I feel like this is average right out of the box. Um, it has quite a bit of stretch to it. I cannot speculate whether it would fit a large circumference um, because I have no way of measuring that. Um, but on me, it did run a little bit big. One thing that I noticed right out of the box is that these bangs, so you'll notice that when I first applied it, those bangs just kind of want to flop right in the face. That fringe is just long enough 
that it gets in the eyes very easily. I do feel like it's gonna take a little bit of training to keep the bangs out of the face, to get them how you want them, and keep them out of the face for the long term. And I did just that. After this unboxing, I set about fixing this fringe, and I'll explain that here in just a moment. So the rest of this little unboxing video is me trying to figure out how I'm gonna manage the fringe, where I'm gonna make my part. We all go through that when we get a new wig in the mail. So that's the way it looked right out of the box. You'll notice that it looks a little bit different here. I actually built it into something I think I can really love. So this, all I did was use the heat from my hands to train it. So I shook it out really well. I let it hang upside down overnight and then I went to work on the front pieces. Otherwise they'd be flopping in my face all throughout the review. So all I do is I warm up my hands really well and then I position the root in the direction that I want it to go in and I just hold, press and hold. And I made several passes on this. I probably worked on it a good five to 10 minutes. And I'm finally getting to the point where I really like the lift and the contour that I've created at the front. It's a soft lift and contour. And I think it really ex accentuates the parting space that I chose, which is just left of center. And it really helps keep the fringe out of my face. And all I think I would need to do maybe is use some a wig spray, some hairspray for wigs, or some sort of product to keep that into a permanent position. I mean, it's pretty good. These, these fibers really did train up very, very well. All right, so that's all I have done to this style to make it look like you see it here. And that's all I have done to get you the look that you see here. So let's talk about this, uh, the specs of this style. So we're looking at about a five inch fringe. And that's going to come down right about to the hollow of my cheek here. And I think the five inch fringe is nice because it blends in with the other layers perfectly. And when I train it to move back, you get a little bit of feathery action there as well. Now in the back, you're going to see a, an eight inch crown. And that eight inch crown tapers down into about a 1.75 inch nape. It creates a little bit of roundness or beveling at the back. And then you see the sides are about six, five to six inches there too. So they have a little bit of a forward movement which creates an angular effect coming off of the crown. It's very well done. And you can see these layers are very nicely cut, well-appointed wig style here. Lots and lots of luxurious features and exquisite layering. Let's get up close on this lace front. I wanna check out those seams from the front. Very well done. And I can't see much detail in the camera, but the way the seams are done here that lace kind of wraps around and it obscures those seams so nicely. Beautiful lace front with some uh, very fine knotting there at the front. And then you should be able to see the illusion of scalp no matter how you want to part it from the top. So let's take a look at the style theory for this one. Um, just a short, straight bob. I say it's classically inspired because you do have that that kind of classic roundness to it. And that gives you some sophistication. It gives you that polished look. It has a little bit of a conservative feel to it initially, but then it tapers into some beautiful modern layering. This is well tailored. You can see where there's a little bit of a point cut on the layering. It has that uh, beautiful angle and the tapered, the tapered nape. So yeah, I think it's flirty and fun and casual, yet it's very polished and sophisticated at the same time. Let's talk about the fiber. So each one of these fibers is silky baby fine, feathery, feathery fine. Okay, and then you will also see that there's kind of a, a, a medium to thicker density on this one. In fact, 
uh, there is a lot of hair on this one. So if I just pull all the hair in from the sides, I can make a half inch ponytail on either side just with all of this hair. Now that is also, that, that lush density also is very consistent with more of a sophisticated or classic looking bob style. This one also has a lot of permatees. So despite the fact that it's lace front and hand tied top, there is a lot of permatees on the sides. Right here, that rounded look is accentuated and propped up by that permatees. So you're gonna get lots of permatees at the temple, just above the temple, um, throughout the back, really none at the nape, and obviously none at the front or the top. But yes, there is quite a bit. Now you can also use the heat from your hand to kind of squash and shrink that permatees a little bit. But I feel like, um, I, I still feel like you're gonna need to really grasp and embrace that classic round bob look to love this one. So you saw me bring this right out of the box. Um, I really haven't styled it yet other than to train that front a little bit. So I'm eager to get in there to see how I can tuck it, how I can shift the part and everything that I can do with this style. I think a little bit of styling paste to kind of slick it back would give you a super chic look. I'm not going to do that to the style today, um, but I will definitely pull it away from the face so that you can see it. Now with glasses, I suspect because there's such soft pillowy permatees in that temple area that depending on your your head and your glasses, you may or may not have to go underneath the weft to get a secure fit. I'm not doing too bad. These glasses arms are probably about average and this is between the ear and the ear tabs. So I'll just go ahead and manipulate the hair a little bit so that you can see all the different styles, you can see how it moves and reacts. Thank you so much for joining me today. Don't, don't forget to check this out at Wig Studio One. All of the links are below. We'll see you again soon at Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.